Hey there, I am Christy Ruffino, former broke single mom turned CEO of two six-figure businesses and best-selling author with 15 books. But it wasn't always like this. Not long ago, I was a hot mess. Yes, I did a lot of things right, but mostly I was throwing spaghetti on the wall to see what would stick. Fast forward past many failed attempts and a few incredible victories, I not only get to share what I've learned along the way, I get to bring together top influencers as they share their empowering stories, insider secrets, and valuable resources that can be used right now to step into your power. So if you're an ambitious entrepreneur, or possibly one in the making, and you're looking to create a business and life that lights you up, well then you're in the right place. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of the Mastery Unleashed podcast. This is Christy Rafino, and I want to welcome you today. This is a special holiday time season that is talking about a topic that can be a little sensitive to some people, and it is about drinking. It's about alcohol and how to have joy beyond those drinks this holiday season. And I have the pleasure of interviewing Ruby Williams. And she is an amazing woman. Her story is uh, incredible what she went through to be able to not only, uh, you know, combat her journey with alcohol. um, And she has a very unique, uh, I should say, a unique story and history around that and how uh, how she was able to basically her whole life was ingrained in alcohol with her career. And, but she was able to recognize it was a problem and overcome it. And now she is a certified coach an alcohol freedom coach. And she has helped thousands of people uh, basically navigate that journey and come out of the other side in a way that keeps their dignity and just gets great results. So Ruby stands tall as a beacon of hope as being an alcohol freedom coach. And she is on a mission to guide those who want to change their relationship with alcohol and move to a path of profound transformation. And she has tools and she uses a process that is fairly new yet. I've heard through science Um, has been designed in a way that is getting their clients, getting the clients great results. So um, let's go ahead and get on with the show so you can meet Ruby, you can hear her story, and you can learn some great wisdom from her and get this amazing resource that she has put together for our audience. So let's get on with the show and you'll be able to see for yourself how cool Ruby is and how you can discover joy beyond drinks this holiday season. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to today's show, and welcome, Ruby. I'm really excited to have you on the show today and dive into the conversation we're going to be having about discovering joy beyond drinks this holiday season. So you are one of the women in our most recent Overcoming Mediocrity book, and I think you were one of the last women that joined our uh, our project Um, It was a lot of fun to get to know you, and I want the audience to know a little bit about you too. So um, can you take a few moments and share about your story? And because that really lets the audience know why you're so passionate about this mission. Yeah. Thank you so much, Christy. I'm so excited to be here. And and thank you for this opportunity to share my story because I have such 
a passion around helping people. Um, so a little bit about me. Yeah, I, I grew up in Northern California in the wine country, and I was working in the wine industry for around 20 years. And yeah, wine became a total part of my life. And it just happened where I ended up like kind of drinking to relieve stress after work because everybody around me is telling me and showing me and I grew up and TV and, you know, there's everything. It's, it's all like, it's okay. And it's accepted. And so of course I'm going to drink wine after work. And it's just the nature of the substance, the alcohol is that you need more to get that same feeling, to feel that sense of kind of re relaxation or relief or, and eventually it just, my tolerance just kept increasing and uh it happened kind of uh not you know i didn't even realize it was happening i mean i would have said i never would have been the type of person that would have become addicted to alcohol and then all of a sudden it's like something changed and it became something that i thought about a lot and um and then yeah it's just like this vicious cycle i call it groundhog's day where it's like you know i would have a stressful day at work, you know, corporate job. I'm a single mom. I've got all the things. And I always, you know, I'll just have that one glass of wine after work, but it always led to two. And then it just kept increasing, you know? Um, and then I'd have a couple glasses while I'm making dinner or with dinner. The next thing I know, um, I'm waking up on the couch, you know, and it's like, oh, what happened? And then I would wake up in the middle of the night, like just, like, why did I do that again? You know what? And I felt so alone. I felt like it was only me. I think that's the thing that really, I, it, it's just, I felt alone. I felt like, why can't I figure this out? Why isn't willpower working? Because I'd wake up in the morning and be like, I'm not drinking today. It was like every single morning. And the next thing I know, um, I would feel like I'm not going to do it. I, I would have like the willpower or whatever. And then go, lo and behold, another stressful work day. And then you get to the end of that and I'll just have one glass. It's just this like the whole thing. So, um, so part of my story is that uh, I also had bat bariatric surgery. So I gained a lot of weight, weight and um, people with bariatric surgery um, I, I are actually more susceptible to becoming addicted to alcohol or having alcohol use disorder. Um, if you think about it, like I cut away a little bit of my stomach, but I didn't change any of my thinking. And I lost the weight, but I still, I was eating to numb my feelings and relieve stress and all of those reasons. I didn't change any of my thinking. So I, so then I was able to drink because I could drink in my littler stomach, but I couldn't eat. And the next thing I know, I think, I just think it, it sped up. I was probably on that, you know, trajectory, but I, it just sped things up. Um, so and Ruby, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. So, so Ruby, was it the, the alcohol that you replaced the food, you replaced alcohol, yeah, the food with happened. alcohol? Yeah. Yeah. That's what happened in my story. Um, but like I said, I was still definitely on my journey to becoming addicted to alcohol, or I probably already was even before the surgery. Um, but it just ex expedited everything, I think made it happen faster. Um, anyway, I tried for probably seven years on my own to create rules, or I tried um, AA, I tried naltrexone. It's a, it's a drug that helps you um, not feel the effects of alcohol. I tried Kaiser program outpatient programs. And then I finally came in contact with Annie Grace and the book, This Naked Mind. Um, and that was life-changing for me because uh, it's, it's science-based, compassion-based. It's about changing your thoughts, reframing your beliefs and getting into the emotions. And that's what I really needed help with. That's what really made the difference. So then I decided to become a coach. Um, I did uh, the This Naked Mind Institute. I am now a senior coach. I've helped thousands of people. I'm not kidding you, thousands of people. Um, I am. Uh, I love helping people and coaching and um, 
yeah. And that's why I was so excited to write a chapter in the book to spread the word. And um, yeah, so that's my story, I guess. And, and in a nutshell, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a great story. And I know um, I've, I've had relationships in my life. I mean, I'm saying like, I've had people in my life, I should probably word it differently, um, that did have to manage different addictions. And I know it doesn't, you can't beat it by willpower and you just can't decide, okay, I'm done with that because there's other things going on in, internally in our brains. And it seems like what you do with uh, your, um, uh, your this, naked, this naked mind coaching strategies is it really addresses those deeper, the deeper issues. Right. As well as um, instead of like the, the, the model that's out there in our culture is more around just stop the behavior. Right. Stop right, the behavior yeah. and white knuckle it, figure it out. Uh, we are have such a gentler approach where it's about learning, becoming aware and curious, and having the the big piece is self compassion. Mm, I think yeah. a lot of people stay in the cycle because of shame, because it's like it's a shameful thing in our society. It's like this elephant, you know, in the room kind of thing. Um, and I want to break that open. I'm sharing my story vulnerably. I share in the in the book in the chapter um, some stuff I haven't actually shared before. So really, you'll have to read it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's um, I think vulnerability kills shame. Right. If the more people that can talk about it, it the less it's it's because it our brains are working normally when they become addicted to something. Actually, it's how our brains work. Um, it's back even in the caveman days, we needed the dopamine to figure out where the raspberries were so we could go. And so it lights up our brain and it feels good. And then we, we it's like this chasing. You want more and more and more to feel that same feeling. So right. we're trying to avoid pain and, you know, go towards pleasure, right? There's always this kind of balancing act in our brain. So, yeah. yeah. And I would imagine when we, you know, make a decision that, all right, we're going to not drink tonight or whatever, you know, you may be faced with, and then you drink anyways, or you aren't able to uphold that decision, then you just feel worse. And then that exactly. keeps the cycle going because then you try to mask that pain or that disappointment that you have in yourself. And then you just kind of keep going in this loop, really. Yeah. And so if you can almost see see the, the situation, like step a little bit to the side and look at it with curiosity and awareness. Um, in fact, a lot of times I start with an awareness exercise where you just go really slow, like sipping your drink and seeing what does it actually feel like instead of just, you know, mindlessly drinking, right? You just drink without thinking about it, without slowing down. So that's kind of one of the first things. Yeah. yeah. That's really helpful. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to get into some strategies after our break, but uh, one of the things I want to ask you, you have made a decision to now, because you've been able to kind of, you know, master the the process of managing your addiction right I, right you're just man i'm managing it from what i understand right it's not it's still there right but you're you figured out how to you could probably say this better but i'm i probably not saying it the right way but <laughs> i think the bottom line is you've come out and had and now this is your mission you sh you're sharing this publicly your story is out it's in our book it's you know on your website and in your story you're sharing it to inspire other people that are on their journey. Exactly. Now, what about people that have not made it their decision to build a business around this, but yet they've been able to, I don't know, like they've, they've been able to get on the other side of it, but they don't necessarily want to share their story because maybe they're still feeling that I did it. I'm proud of myself, but I don't necessarily want the whole world to know about it. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, like, tell yeah. me, a, let's talk about that a little bit. Cause you're yeah. definitely public with your story, but not everybody is. 
Oh, I would say most people are not. Yeah. Um, I'm public because I'm a coach and I want to spread the word. And this is like my life passion now. Um, but yeah, most people, um, in fact, I have, well, maybe we'll talk about that later, but like um, a lot of people, they want to still, you know, go out with their friends, not say I'm not drinking alcohol, but maybe you order an NA beer or an NA wine. That's almost the like the first step, maybe if you're still you know going out socializing. Um, I can also help you with ways to come up with answers to questions. Like if someone asks you, um, "Do you want to have a drink?" and you can answer in the positive, "Yes, I'll have a sparkling water." Do you see what I mean? Instead yeah. of "No, I'm not drinking," and then coming up with some sort of reason. Yeah, there's a lot of different strategies and tools and um and no, nobody um none of you have to just, you know, shout it out to the world. In fact, um uh, in fact most people don't. They they try to keep it closer. They come up like um, when I first went alcohol free, I said, "I'm on a keto diet," which was true, but I just stuck with kind of the health reasons. Like, "I'm on a keto diet. I want to lose weight and there's no alcohol on a keto diet." So there's lots of different ways you can, you know, still be in the world and not yes. share like that you've had any kind of a problem and you don't have to have had a problem. For example, um, if you just don't feel good with alcohol, like there's the bot, like that's one of the first questions. How do you want to feel? Mm -hmm. And if it's, you're just not feeling good when you drink, maybe you're not sleeping or you wake up with hangovers. You don't have to have had any kind of like a rock bottom. Okay. So yeah. let's, let's take a break because now I've okay. got even more things okay. <laughs> that I want to, that I want to talk about. So let's take awesome. a break. We'll come back. Cause I want to make sure we have time to dive into this. So hang tight, everybody. We'll be right back. Be right back. Welcome back, everybody. This is Christian Ruby Williams, and we're talking about how you can discover more joy beyond drinks this holiday season. And Ruby shared an amazing story, and I was just dying in to get into some of these questions. And I know she has a bunch of strategies that she wants to share with you. But what I want to kind of start with, and then we could transition, is I, I, for whatever reason, sometimes make an assumption if somebody says they're not drinking, I just assume they're an alcoholic. Now, these days, I don't assume that anymore because I know there are a lot of people that don't drink just because they want to be healthier. Mm -hmm. They want to not feel bad, like you mentioned before uh, the, the commercial. I know for me, I used to be able to drink three or four glasses of wine. Well, not well, but... <laughs> <laughs> Three, I was on the table Four, I was under the table. Um, right. But now I just drink one glass of wine and, and that's all I want. That's all I need. Because if I drink more, I wake up in the middle of the night and I just know that it's my body that isn't necessarily liking it as well. Right. So the question I have is for the, for us out here, for people like me, how do we navigate it when somebody says they don't drink? Do we just not talk about it? Do we ask questions about it? I'm sure it really depends on the person and the relationship we have, but how do you, like, how can you guide us to be able to help you on the journey? That is such a good question. Um, coming from the other side of it, I prefer that it's just a non-issue. It's literally- okay beverage in a glass that we're talking about it's we're talking about liquid in a glass I know like <laughs> isn't that funny that we're having all this conversation and when it's just like a beverage um I think it can make the person yeah feel a little um yeah it, awkward, it, like right? awkward like, right like they don't fit like, in and yeah it, it's definitely a, that is one of the main reasons um that people continue to still drink the social the, the social, social yeah but when someone just says they're not drinking I mean fine just well what, what would you like to drink 
Yeah, right. I mean, that's a question you can ask. Um, and then great. Or if you want to ask questions, that's fine. But a lot of people um, prefer if it, they just kind of, it's like a non-issue. That'd be okay. great. It'd be more of a non-issue. Yeah. Non-issue. Okay. All right. That That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Cause you know, sometimes I just, I'm just not sure. And I've seen people that push drinks and I know I never was a really big drinker. And some people would be like, Oh, keep, you got to have a drink or why are you mm -hmm. not drinking? And I'm just like, well, cause I don't want to. And, and look at how silly you're acting. I don't want to act like that. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah. One of the <laughs> tactics I use is like observe others. Like what are people doing? Oh, are I know. More? Are they getting louder, repeating themselves? But um, there's so many different strategies where you can, but if someone does ask you like, why are you not drinking? Um, You know, there's the health thing. I want to feel better. Like you were saying, yeah, I sleep better. Uh, maybe it's, I'm taking medications that alcohol is in conflict with. You could say, um, you know, I'm, a, I'm the designated driver tonight. I need to be really refreshed tomorrow morning. There's so many kind of ways that we, you can, can mm -hmm. figure out how to talk about it. And yeah. yeah. I just feel um, for me, when I see somebody that makes that, takes that stand and is confident in that decision, like I see, a, there's like a level of respect for me that I have in that person. I, I'm just kind of like, well, good for you. You're not like just following the crowd, right? You're doing what's best for you. And I think that that is a, a important piece that if you do say, I'm not drinking and you're not drinking, I, I, I'd be proud of that. Like that, I think that's just amazing for people to be able to kind of go away from the grain and go away from the flow and do what is best for them. Yeah. Actually, when I um, told everyone, because I'm a coach, like I, I told everyone, they were, I got so many, like people are proud, really. Ah. And um, it's really the best present you can give yourself this yeah. holiday season. Yeah. So let's Even, dive into that now, because yeah. our, our focus is to how, how to navigate the holiday season where we know people celebrate more than normal and they celebrate with food and drink. So it's not just drink, it's drink and food and desserts and candy and cookies and all of that stuff, right? Yeah. Um, so can you maybe share with the audience if there's somebody out there that right now that is worried about the holidays coming up because they know the pressure is going to be on, the expectations are going to be different than normal. Like what can you share with them that will help empower them? Okay. The first question is to ask yourself, and I think I just showed it before the break, but how do you really want to feel when you go to your holiday party with maybe family, friends? Um, I know I can share a little story for, for me that I used to drink even more on the holidays because I don't know, maybe I'm more of a, um, like an empath or something, but when I walk into a room, like a holiday party, and there's a whole bunch of people, friends, family, I don't know. It's like all of these memories are like, um, uh, overstimulation, like yeah. overstimulation. And for me, I just wanted to drink. Like that was one of the reasons. So I would end up drinking probably even more on the holidays. Um, and I was a, oh, I would call myself a weepy drunk, meaning oh. I drank too much. I would be the one at the end of Christmas crying. Oh, I, I have a, I know I want someone that up. does that. Yeah. 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 And then you stay away from that person because all of a sudden you don't know when they're going to start crying. <laughs> right. That's not how I want to show up in the world. So yeah, you can start by asking yourself, how do I want to show up? How do I want to feel? And maybe mitigate. For me, I now show up at all parties first. I want to be oh. the first one there so that I can like kind of, you know, manage. And then I show up with my alcohol-free beverages. That's another okay. tip. Yeah, yeah. Bring your own. Don't expect someone else to have it. Like, oh gosh, yeah. yeah. I totally or, see that. Or come up with a fun mocktail, you know? Um, yeah. So there's so many ways. Um, but you know, when I say you, you know, giving yourself like being present is like the best present, right? It's, it's a play on words. I think it's fun, but um, really um like playing with the kids uh at Christmas. I used to just focus on the alcohol. Yeah. So now you play with the kids, have better conversations, be present. Mm. Yeah. You're not drinking. Perfect. 
Yeah. Great. Okay. So what's another tip that you want to share with the audience? Um, just, well, I wanted to talk a little bit about this trend that's coming. Uh, well, it's actually a really popular trend now. Uh, it's called dry January. And uh, so if you've been over drinking, maybe over the holidays, a lot of people like make this um, resolution that maybe they'll cut it out. And um, so dry January is this new trend. Um, and I just wanted to just say that I do an experiment around it where you, it's like a challenge and um, there's so many things that you could learn around it, um, around the substance itself and society and yourself and just discovering yourself. And I think alcohol freedom is actually a superpower. <laughs> Ooh, I love that. Yeah. And there's so many, like just understanding that you actually have that empowerment within you is so huge and that there are ways to cope around the holidays. Like I was telling you earlier, but, um, how do you, yeah. How do you want to feel and just be step outside your comfort zone? You know, um, maybe I love this decision making fatigue is where a lot of times people end up coping with alcohol. Mm. They have so many decisions around the holidays, so many pressures. So as a coach, one of the questions I would ask is, well, what's one thing you can do to have less, you know, decision-making fatigue? What's one thing you can do that will make things easier for you over the holidays? So all of these kinds of things are coping tools. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, this is good. So I know you have a gift that you want to share with the audience. It is a four-step guide to experience a wine-free weekend. Yes. We could, we could even relabel it a wine-free holiday or a new year's or 2024. It would be whatever you want it to be. But I love this, uh, this, the, the step-by-step -step process that you have that you're going to share in this. Could you elaborate on it a little bit more with the audience so they know uh, what it is that they're getting? Yeah. Um, it's a, it's really like a way to just dip your toe in for like a weekend to give it a try. Like maybe, um, you are just drinking alcohol or like a glass of wine every single night. And you just realize, well, what's it like? Am I, you know, how's it really affecting me? So I offer really cool tools. The first one is about making a firm decision. Um, and just getting into why you might want to try this. Like, why do you want to try an alcohol-free weekend or alcohol-free holiday? You can use my freebie, um, the steps, the four steps. Yeah, like you said, for a holiday um, and, or any time you want. Because we talk about this really cool tool. Well, I don't want to give away all the tools. Yeah, it no, no, no. <laughs> just, don't share all of the tools. Just let them know that there are a ton of amazing tools in it. Yeah. And, okay. Here's a fun one. You can take a picture, um, like before and after. I love that because even in just a few days, you can see the difference in your skin, your eyes, you start to, you know, plump up. Um, you know, alcohol is really ages you. It affects your health. It, it affects your sleep. It affects your emotions. Um, you might become more depressed, more anxious. There's so many things that it's affecting. So I love this four step process because it's just like, it's like the, the first step, right? Just mm -hmm. try a weekend and then see how you feel. Yeah. All right. Well, this is really good. I know um, it's, it's a tough, it's, it's a tough thing. I mean, the world is focused on having alcohol be normal and uh, just social and almost expected. And when you look at the statistics and the damage that alcohol does, it's it's pretty bad compared to other things. But um, it's definitely something that I I like from just the little bit of uh, information you shared about your process, how it works completely different than the traditional processes that have been around for years, hundred years, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. So yeah. there's just always new science coming out and, and the science is now showing that for habit change, it's more about the emotions. 
It truly is um, mm -hmm. how, you know, that's why I talk a lot about feelings and emotions and you do the things to feel a certain way. Right. And alcohol just numbs your emotions and it becomes the solution to everything. You want to feel happy, you'll drink. You want to feel less bored. You know, a lot of people drink for boredom. They drink um, because they're lonely. Mm. Um, they drink because they think they need to drink to fit in, as you mentioned. Yeah, so there's yeah. a lot to uncover here. There's a lot. Lots. Yeah. All right. Well, we can only get into a little bit during this show. So please connect with Ruby. And if you want to learn more about her and her process, uh, you can get that on her website and you will find the link to that as well as her social media channels. They're all in the show notes below. Um, depending on what platform you listen, you just check out the show notes, click on the link and it'll take you right to Ruby. And if you want to get Ruby's free gift, also click on the show notes. It will take you to our gift vault so you can get her free step guide as well as a bunch of other resources from all of our past and future guests. So make sure you head over there and keep that link, you know, keep that vault in your browser because we definitely would love to have you continue to go back and grab more free goodies. So I just want to take a moment, Ruby, to, to thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for being vulnerable in the, the whole concept of sharing your story with others because you're doing it to help change their lives. Yes. You're so welcome. So thanks everybody for joining us today. Oh, sorry. I was coughing and you're like, like what do I say? But thanks for filling in there for me. Um, but we'll, we'll just have, uh, we'll just go ahead and close the show and thank everybody for joining us. Uh, make sure you connect with Ruby and go to whatever platform you listen to show us some love. And that way we continue to bring on amazing guests like Ruby. So thanks everybody. And most importantly, thanks Ruby. You're so welcome. Thank you. Happy holidays. Yes. Happy holidays, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Mastery Unleashed podcast, where we believe that everyone can have the business and life of their dreams by turning their mess into their greatest message and following their purpose to help the people who need their newfound wisdom and resources. To learn more, visit MasteryUnleashedPodcast.com. And don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review to this show.